Lords and welcome back to our FAQ Friday. If you're new here, my name is Michaela. I post all things property management every Wednesday and every Friday. So I actually have two parts to today's video. So one question actually came from an on-site and another question actually I wanted to ask you landlords to see what you would do in a situation. So to answer the first question, I actually got it from an on-site from this married couple. They're looking to rent out their property out here in the East Bay area and they were looking to possibly refinance their house. They had asked me what is the best practice when you're trying to refinance your house but you're also trying to rent it. So best advice I can give you is any type of refinancing or any you know major remodeling that you're going to do please at all costs avoid it during tenancy. So if you have the means to be able to refinance your house right then and there before you even get a tenant, I would just do it right now. It's a lot easier, it's a lot. You don't have to worry about juggling somebody else's schedules on top of yours, on top of other any one any other third party who's going to be involved in the refinancing process. You also don't want to disrupt your tenant with different showings. It's just a lot less of a complicated situation if you just do it before your tenant moves in. Now however, if you don't have the means to do it before your tenant moves in or before you turn your property into a rental property, then I would definitely do it during vacancy. Although vacancy can be expensive, it's a lot better to try to do it during a vacancy than to try to do it during a tenancy because you don't want to disrupt or upset that tenant in any possible way. Unless your tenant is extremely nice and flexible, but why roll the dice with that if you don't have to? So the short answer is, is to always try to refinance or do any big projects like that before your tenant moves in, before you even try to hit market for rent. Now, rolling into the second part of this video, I actually went to go see a property today and the tenants had finished their lease, everything was fine, but they wanted us to take care of cleaning. and. <laughs> You know, I'm just I'm just gonna insert some video clips that I took when I went to go see the property today. So I'll go ahead and insert them right now. question to you as a landlord and I feel like some of those videos or some of those clips didn't do it as much justice of how bad it was and how horrible the smell was and I just would like to know how you would handle for one correctly deducting the deposit as a self-managing landlord do you have the means and do you have the vendors to be able to come and clean out the place do the turnover effectively efficiently before another tenant moves in because we all know that vacancy costs us so much money. I wanted to see what you would do as a self-managing landlord. Let me know in the comments how you handle big cleaning projects after a tenant moves out. They literally packed their bags and didn't do anything with cleaning. So let me know. What would you have done as a self-managing landlord? I know what we can do because we have the means and we have the team to be able to do it, but I just am curious what you would do. 
All right, landlords, thanks for tuning in. Remember, I post videos every What's What Wednesday and FAQ Friday. If you have any other questions or you would love me to shout you out on our videos, go ahead and comment down below or all of my contact is actually going to be in the description. All right, my name is Michaela, providing you with a higher standard in property management. Bye, landlords.